Hello everyone, welcome to The Birding Memo, our weekly birding podcast. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the yellow rumped warbler, a little migratory fella for most regions of America. In Canada, it spends its spring season, passes through a migration across northwest of the United States, and spends its winter from the northeast and southern states of the U.S., all across Mexico, all the way to Belize, Guatemala, and small portions of Nicaragua and Costa Rica. This little fella belongs to the Passeriform order and to the Parulidae family, known by its scientific name in Latin as Cetophaga coronata. Among warblers, this species is one of the most common warblers in North America. With a broad breeding range, this species is one of the most ecologically generalized, although it is confined largely to coniferous breeding habitats. Since it's considered two different species, the myrtle warbler in the east and the Audubon's warbler in the west, whose appearance change and differ from each other, I will be for better visualizing opening a Twitter thread attaching a couple of pictures uh, from each different species. Nevertheless, both are quite large Cetophaga warblers, averaging 14 centimeters long and about 12 to 13 grams, and all plumage and subspecies possess the yellow rump that gives this species its name. This species, during the breeding season, mostly feeds out of insects and other small invertebrates. For migration and in winter, insects and fruit, sometimes exclusively fruit. During breeding season, primary gleans insect from leaves and branches, commonly hawks and sallies from mosquito, gnats, flying ants, and the like. Possibly does more fly catching in west. For example, in Maine, Foraging males hover significantly more than females did. Females forage more rapidly than males, and birds on island forage more slowly than those on mainland. When referring to its behavior, this species tends to move by hopping predominantly on arboreal vegetation and ground, often climbs vertical trunk of trees while foraging. Most flights, other than during migration, is within or between trees. All three individuals will fly above canopy while foraging for food for nestlings. Performs vertical flights in addition to horizontal flights that sometimes extend wide of territory. Will fly across open spaces in forest and out of forest into openings, but may avoid crossing waters to ensure they like migration movements. Sometimes something curious we can observe is that the, even if there is no evidence of diving or swimming, there has been reports that nests are occasionally placed over water. Directly observation needed to determine the ability of such nest to fledge the young. Now, there are a couple of cool facts about this little fella. Did you know that the yellow rum warbler is the only warbler able to digest the waxes found in bay barracks and wax myrtles? Its ability to use these fruits allow it to winter farther north than other warblers, sometimes as far north as Newfoundland. Also, the oldest recorded specimen of this species was at least seven years old. These species are perhaps the most versatile foragers of all warblers. They are the warbler that you are most likely to see fluttering out from a tree to catch a flying insect, and they are also quick to switch over to eating berries in fall. This species has been spotted foraging including picking at insects on wash up seaweed at the beach, skimming insects from the surface of rivers and the ocean, and picking them out of spider webs and grabbing them of piles of manure. Thanks to everyone for listening to today's podcast episode about the Setofaga Coronata. Share this podcast if you find it interesting and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And see you later, beaters.